sorry, uh, Angela, we're doing hands or X's. Um, I think the preferred is um, X's, but some people um, aren't able to use the X, so they'll have to use the hand. So I'll keep an eye on it for you as well. I'm just waiting for confirmation from Sarah. Chairman, I've just had confirmation that we're now live. Good evening. Welcome to the virtual meeting uh, of Cornwall Council, the Cornwall Council Harbours Board. Before consideration of today's business, I'm going to outline the proposals for this meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and it's also being recorded. When members of this uh, board are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the council's live stream fails during this meeting, we cannot share the proceedings. I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish the connection or do whatever else we can do to, to help them get back. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. When it comes to votes, that's going to be taken by roll call, so uh, each one of you individually, and the result will be announced by our uh, clerk. Where a member has, has declared a non-register roll interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter they must lead a virtual meeting their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting when it's appropriate to confirm the procedure for today's meeting it's um, committee members who wish to speak on an item please could you put an x in the box or raise your hand um, if that's at all possible if you can't do anything just just um just kind of butt in um, carefully, please. Uh, but that's only if you can't do one of those uh, two things that I've just mentioned. Um, and that's the end of the announcements. Before we start today's business, I'll ask the Democratic Services Officer to confirm members and officers' attendance. Angela, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'll ask each um, member of the committee to either give their electoral division or to state whether they're a co-optee or an independent member. Chairman, I'll start with you. Yeah, my name is Loic Rich. I am a Cornwall councillor. I represent Truro Tregoles Electoral Division and I am, of course, the chairman of this board. Thank you. Uh, councillor Evans. Um, I'm Geoffrey Evans, the Cornwall councillor of Falmouth Orwenick. Councillor Brown. Good evening, uh, Councillor Brown. I'm the uh, elected member for Newquay Central and Vice Chairman of the Board. Councillor May. I'm Councillor May. I represent uh, Penryn West. Councillor Nolan. Uh, Rob Nolan, representing Truro Redanick. Councillor Robinson. Richard Robinson, um, uh, elected member for St Ives East. Tony Gerd. I'm I'm independent. Um, my name is Tony Gerd and I'm one of the independent councillors. Thank you. Ryan Kitchener. Ryan Kitchener, independent member. Ian Shipperley. Uh, Ian Shipperley. Can you hear us, Mr. Shipley? I'll just move on. Uh, Jeff Wilson. And I'm an independent member. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shipley, can you be there? You might be having a bit of technical difficulty at the moment. We have Ian Shipley, who's also an independent member. I'll just let you know um, which officers are present at the meeting. Obviously, there's myself, Angela Saunders. I'm the board's clerk. We have Chris Jones, Maritime Manager, Mark Killingback, the Harbour Master for Truro and Penryn, Rob Andrew, the Head of Environment Assets and Service Delivery, 
We've got Kingsley Keats from Legal, Mike Ridgway, the Harbour Master for Nuki and St Ives, and David Forty, the Regulation and Enforcement Officer from Falmouth Harbour Commissioners. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, well, thank you very much, Angela. So that's all the introductions done. Um, so we're going to go to the agenda now, the main agenda, and the first item um, this evening uh, is apologies for absence. Um, do yes. we have any? Yeah. I haven't received any apart from one um, apology for joining. He'll be joining the meeting late, and that's Wayne Rowe. Thank you, Angela. The next item is um, de declarations of interest. Um, so I, I, I'm aware that one member probably has to declare an interest. So I'll just invite members, please. Could you um, let me know if you have any declarations of interest to make? Just shout out, please. Didn't Councillor Brown say that he had a, an interest? I think, yeah. Uh, Councillor Brown, please. Yeah, apologies, Chairman. I tried to put next in the box. Um, the um, the interest is uh, item six, uh, recommendation three, because I'm a new key uh, mooring fee, fee pay holder, uh, pay holder for mooring fees. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, if you could remember to leave at that part, point, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, are there any more declarations of interest from anyone this evening, please? Okay, great. If at any point you do think that you have something to declare, because sometimes we don't always realise until it happens, please just tell me immediately or Angela and leave. Thank you. Um, right, so we'll go to the, what we're going to do is look at the minutes now of the last meeting. Um, and that was held on the 3rd of September this year. It was actually a virtual meeting. And um, it's the first page of the minutes is on page five of the agenda. So if you could all please go to that page and what we'll do is we'll just go through them page by page just for accuracy, really. Um, so please let me know if you think there's anything that's been misrepresented or misreported. Um, so we'll start on page one of the minutes. Page two. Page three, page four, page five. Uh, Lurek, on page five, yeah. item two resolved. I, I don't remember it like that. Um, I'm yeah, it was quite a lengthy debate, as I remember, but um, I did actually, this did come up the other day. Um, I was speaking to some officers about this this um, recommendation. I'm fairly sure it is it is correct. Um, Not how I remember it. Okay. I, I, I remember that um, it was put down because there was no resolution on the evening that it would be discussed further. Okay. Um, Chairman, I just um, suggest that we um, take a get a mover and secondary and take a vote and obviously yeah. members won't vote for them if they don't think they're correct. Yeah, I've, okay. I'm sorry, Councillor Robinson. You're, you're muted, Councillor Robinson. Too many buttons to press to get in. Okay, um, I was the one that was doing most of the talking in this and trying to and trying to get some support for um, the, the our boat operators. Um, and 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 I have to say, this is is really how I um, how I remember it ending up uh, in the sense that I went back to the uh, chair of the of the um, the harbour's users and um, gave him the view uh, that was expressed here and um, and left it at that and nothing has come back to me since then so there'll be nothing from me to debate further and I'm happy with what's written yeah. there. And, and, and I've got to say um, that on item number two that's something that we 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 strive to do all the time and um, I, I know people want perhaps want to discuss it further and we probably will um, but I, I'm fairly sure that that was with respect to um, any, any any concerns. I, I'm absolutely sure that's what was agreed. So what I'll do now is I'll invite somebody to propose and second those minutes, please. Uh, 
Um, I think, Councillor May, you're proposing. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to second. So, all those in favour, please. Oh, Chairman, um, I have to do a roll, a, a roll, oh, of roll call vote. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's let's start that with absolutely. that, please. Thank you. Go through that, Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Abstain. I wasn't in that part of the meeting. Councillor May. Four. Uh, Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Tony Gerd. Against. Ed Kitchener. Four. Tim Shipperley. Four. Can you hear me okay now, Angela? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. And um, Thank you. Jeffrey Wilson. Four. Emma, the minutes have been carried. Thank you, Angela. Um, so we go back to the main agenda now and the first item on the um sorry the, the fourth item it's the budget monitor report and what what um we've kind of agreed to do from now on the budget monitor report rather than go like every harbour's board meeting go for a verbatim um because that is quite time consuming we'll we'll probably i think we're going to do it twice a year now so we, we're going to keep people up to date with and give everybody all the figures and everything and um I just think really just for to speed things up a little bit really um and i think members i think i kind of i've raised this informally with members actually some some members not all um and, and that's the way we're going to do it from now on and i hope people are happy with that um and of course you know we're always um open if anyone wants to raise any any particular budget issue with um chris or me then you're more than welcome to it's not we're not withholding anything it's just purely to make these meetings work better really so um chris can i pass over to you please just for a sort of a rundown thank you loic yeah i'll start by um running through um number two the purpose of the report financial responsibility is key for all of the officers um and we review the operational spend each month to ensure the budget is adhered to and if any significant variance arise plans can be established for corrective management and the board informed I think as we'd expect as we go through these figures, we will see that uh, COVID has had an impact on all of our harbours this year. We'll start by looking at Truro, where our total expenditure is £2,195 under the profile budget, but our expenditure is forecast to fall within budget this year. Our total income to September was 431959 which was 32000 ahead of the profile target. And this is predominantly due to the layup fees, which are performing well, the two car vessels currently in layup and recently joined by a wave device. Um, the pandemic is expected to have a negative impact on income, with the total income forecast being 14,000 behind budget. Waterfront House at Malpas was closed to holiday rentals for April and June and is also closed at this time. This has resulted in a loss of £11,000. Passenger dues are expected to be down by £16,000 with enterprise boats not operating to Truro. And there have been delays with the pontoon system being installed at Malpas, largely due to COVID-19. The plan is that this will now open in March 2021. The budget also includes a £57,000 contribution to reserves. At Penryn, our harbour budget there is £20,359 under the profile budget. And this is largely due to the underspend at September of £15,000. This is in relation to our maintenance, which will be predominantly undertaken during the quieter winter months. Our total income 105000 at Penryn, which is 12923 lower than target. Our parking income at Penryn is down by £12,000. Maritime income down by £2,000 and our passenger dues are expected to be down by £7,000 due to the park and float not running. The budget includes a budgeted £5,000 contribution to reserves. At Newquay, oh, Chris, can I just butt but in, sorry, just quickly, just for the parking income, Cornwall Council made it policy to make car parks free during the first lockdown. Was that, was that, did we do that? I mean, did that affect us as well, or we did, did we just uh, have? Uh, was it just nobody was using them? I believe it was also locked down under the same agreement. Okay, I will check for you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Carry on. 
Our total expenditure, sorry, moving on to Newquay Harbour, our total expenditure is 79,459, 14,000 under the profile budget. We should note that the St. Ives Harbour Master is also working at Newquay and that will be recharged as appropriate in due course. The total income is 7,963, lower than profiled, and that's a result of the pandemic taking an impact on our parking, and that has recovered in the recent month that we're, we've just left. Our maritime income is expected to be forecast down by 2,000 pounds. Overall, Newquay Harbour is forecast to have a net income of 3,000 pounds, which is 12,000 less than the target set in the budget. Move into St. Ives. Total expenditure is 9,000 over the profiled budget. But again, this is due to the um, St. Ives Harbour Master working at Nikki. So there is some uh, amending to be done within the account. And we are underspent by £3,354 on repairs and maintenance with this taking place in the quieter winter months. Our transport costs are expected to be £500 lower than budgeted due to reduction in travel at the start of the year. And our total income is 20,108 lower than target. This is as, again as a result of the pandemic. The car park forecast to be down by 27,500. And also the impact of the pedestrianised areas within St. Ives. Visitor moorings and dues on passengers are forecast to be down by four and a half thousand pounds. Overall, St. Ives is forecast to have a net income of 3,500 pounds which is 31,500 less than target in the budget. We move to Penzance, where our total expenditure is 209,558, which is 8,442 under the profile budget. Employees' expenses are underspent due to the, it says Maritime Manager, it is actually the Harbourmaster post being vacant, although this is partially offset by additional agency workers. Transport expenditure is expected to be £1,500 from the budget figure due to reduction in travel. At Penzance, our annual income is 200, actual income to September is 279,881, which is 67,211 higher than target at this point a year. But I should point out that the harbour has received £78,000 of grant funding from the Department for Transport to compensate for losses arising from the pandemic. Our actual income loss from the Salonian 3 operating is in the region of £9,472 as forecast, and this is predominantly passenger dues. We anticipate, however, that we will need to return some grant funding at the end of the year when we review our overall figures. Overall, Penzance Harbour is forecast to have a net income of 49,112, which is 13,112 more than the target set in the budget. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, um, Chris. Um, can I just invite any any questions or comments, please, from members, or well, questions preferably, um, on, on the budget monitor report? Um, please put an X in the box if you have any questions. I've got one. Oh, I think that's Jeff. Yeah, not a question, but just a comment that I think considering everything that's gone on this year, the budget looks extremely positive and, and well done to everybody who's been involved in it. And I'm Thank happy you. to propose accept it as set out. Great. Um, uh, Councillor Nayland, a question or a comment? Thank you. Um, I don't know if I didn't, didn't hear it or not, but uh, the losses on car parking, are we, are we able to claim those back from the government or Cornwall Council's training really scheme? Chris? Yeah, Rob, that's an interesting point, actually. Um, it was what I will take forward and, and see if there is anything that we can do to claim. You know, I noticed some parish councils are claiming back and yeah, it's worth, worth investigating, I think. Yeah, no, definitely. We'll, we'll take that forward. Uh, I think uh, Ryan, Ryan Kitchener, please. Um, where the Department of Transport have done the grant for where losses have been made for Penzance, can Rob, you say some of the money has to be paid back? Can that not be spread across some of the other places that um, have losses or is it predominantly for Penzance? Chair, if I may, I'll respond. 
Yep. yep. Ryan, thank you. A, a good question. Um, the grant was specifically for the uh, link to the Isles of Scilly. Um, now, during the pandemic, the vessels remained in the harbour, so we didn't lose any harbour dues. It is only the passenger due that we've lost for the Salonian, which has carried 40,000 passengers instead of the usual 100,000 passengers a year. So unfortunately, it, it is very specific that it is for that service. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not going to harp on about this forever, but uh, the figure at the, um, at the bottom of page 13, I'll figure the last sentence, is uh, quite interesting because it, it shows you that that um, for, of the forecast income or the, from the forecast income of £3,500, we've actually um, achieved um, £31,500 less than the target figure in the budget. So uh, it, to me, it just shows um, how badly places like St Ives and probably Newquay as well have been hit by this and the businesses that um, that are operating out of the harbour. It's very much a mirror in, in terms of um, what is actually happening in the town, the scales of the losses in St Ives um, uh, as, as an example compared to other, many of the others that are there. Thank you, um, Councillor Robinson. Chris, can I just, just, just sort of pound for pound, I mean, all, all the grant that we're getting um, in relation to the pandemic, is that kind of how much of our losses is that covering across all the harbours? So, I mean, just bluntly, is there, a, you know, would you say what, 10% or 50% roughly speaking? So, did you say the grant or? Any, any grant or assistance we've had in relation to losses? The, the, only grant that we, the only grant that we've received is specifically for Penzance and it is, it's only for nine nine thousand four hundred and seventy two pounds. OK, so we've had nothing for any anywhere else. No, no, other have, no, no, we've been reviewing the MMO or offering some grant schemes um, yeah. for COVID relief, but unfortunately that doesn't yet extend to uh, more in fees for fishermen, which we have inquired. Um, I've raised it with Cornish fish producers who were going to also speak to the MMO on the mm. matter. None of our staff have been furloughed either, have they? As far as I know. Yeah, no. so we've had very little, really, and we still managed to. Well, you know, we still we're still standing, aren't we? Really, so. Yeah, yeah. I think that's testament really to the the work by my team, um, who really have pulled out the stops this year in, in difficult circumstances. Yeah, well, I think we all echo what Councillor Brown just said, um, and um, I'm happy to second as well. Um, I think so. Um, the rec recommendation is um, on page. Yeah, Chairman, it's just to note and approve. Just to note, yeah. Um, do we, you don't need to vote on it then, do we? Yes, I need yes. to. Okay. Could, could you do the roll call in that case, please? Yeah. Um, Councillor Evans. Or. Councillor Brown. Or. Councillor May. Laura. Councillor Nolan. Got four, sorry. Councillor Rich. Four. Robinson. Four. Tony Good. Four. Ben Kitchener. Four. Jim Shipley. Four. And Jeff Wilson. Four. Thank you. Um, yes, that's been noted and approved, Chairman. OK, that's wonderful. Um, the next item on the agenda, it's uh, item number five. It's the Seafish Responsible Fishing Port Scheme. And can I can I invite the Harbour Master for Newquay and St Ives, Mike Ridgeway, please, to um, to give us uh, to, to pre present this to, to the board, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this uh, report sets out to explain the basis of the uh, Seafish Responsible Fishing Port Scheme, uh, which was established for larger ports, <coughs> excuse me, in 2018. And the first port accredited under that scheme was uh, Peterhead, the beginning of 2019. Uh, Seafish then found the gap and realised they needed to have a scheme for small ports because clearly uh, ports with markets represent a smaller proportion of all ports. And it was felt that small ports like Newquay, St Ives, Penzance, etc., could be disadvantaged. Um, so the scheme has now been put together. The, the report lays out the, the basis of the scheme, and the actual standard was attached as um, 
an appendix to the to the report. So in essence, it demonstrates that a particular port uh, behaves responsibly. So that's everything from catch handling, uh, cleanliness of the facility, right through to um, responsibility in the way that staff are employed, their pay, terms and conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a very comprehensive um, scheme. And the way it works for smaller ports is that the port is only audited on the sections that apply to it. So, for example, if catch is not handled as such, but just maybe stored overnight or sent straight off in a vehicle, they don't get audited under that section. And equally, if they don't have third party contractors, for example, on site, they're not audited on their uh, relationship with those those parties. So the the purpose of this is the, the, the scheme is to demonstrate to the industry that fish landed in a port is is been handled responsibly. And I believe that as a local authority, we should be leading the way with this um, and the scheme will be going live. I think in the next probably six to eight weeks, we just had the final uh, document through for approval, uh, which will be launched immediately uh, thereafter. So that's that's a very brief summary of the scheme and I'm happy to uh, to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mike. That's really good. Good report. Thank you. Um, any any questions from us, please? Ian Shipley. Um, thanks, Louis. Uh, Mike, it's really, um, I've read through the standard. It looks um, pretty comprehensive and actually is, is everything that we probably pretty much do now. Uh, just one question, how much um, extra staff effort is required to uh, um, to support the audits and, and keep the documentation and does that cause us any difficulty? Thank you, that's a, that's a very interesting question. The, the ports that we're looking at, the specific fishing ports, would have sufficient staff to handle the admin. It just it will add a little bit more work to the harbour staff. It's not sufficient that we would need to increase our resource. Um, uh, and other than on the initial stages, um, where there would be perhaps some some time required to to implement the appropriate systems uh, ready for for an audit. So, so that's that's really my concern. Actually, it's the um, having implemented quite a few of the sort of ISO type systems in the past. There's, there is quite a bow wave to get ready for the first audit and then it tends to to uh, go along um, in normal course. Are we, are we sure that we're not overloading the team by asking them to do all that? Does it need a bit, bit of effort and um, uh, additional effort, external effort perhaps um, to start with? OK, the the um, the key, the key, the two key points to this is the fact that we have to develop a HACCP plan. Um, for those that are not familiar with the term, that stands for hazard analysis and critical control points. It's the basis of all um, manufacturing, food manufacturing systems in the UK it was developed by the Americans some years ago. Um, so there's some effort required to put that in, but um, coincidentally, I happen to have a HACCP qualification. So uh, we don't need to buy in any expertise for that. I can prepare plans for the ports fairly easily because they are simple, simple processes. You've got fish, landing, fridge, vehicle gone away. So it, it's it's pretty straightforward, really. Um, going forward, it's it's the second part of that is the record keeping. We are we have a fair amount of record keeping to do at the moment. Um, and I know that uh, the maritime manager is keen on making all our record keeping electronic to get away from these things, which is marvelous as far as I'm concerned. Um, and that will simplify the process. And, and it's basically recording that we've cleaned something, we've inspected something, uh, we've taken a temperature check, etc. So whilst it is a little more work, I, I don't believe it's it's onerous or will will harm us in any way. OK, that's great. Thanks very much. Um, Councillor Brown, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike, for the presentation. Uh, presumably, um, if we get accredited as a, a responsible fishing port for Newquay and St Ives, that will actually give greater confidence to the consumer who's buying the fish in terms of quality assurance. That's that is that is the intention of, of the of the scheme. Um, 
and it is it is fair to say let's be realistic that that there will probably be quite a bit of resistance from users in as much as they won't understand the need for it because they won't see an immediate benefit um, but I'm sure we're, we're all aware that that there's a big move within restaurants they like to demonstrate um, the traceability the providence of some provenance sorry of something and they like to be able to advertise that that the bash you're eating or the pollock or the cod or whatever it is was caught in a certain place uh, at, at a certain time and ideally by a certain boat so there is a, and that will be what will drive the thing forward because the general public will want that the merchants will want that and that will put pressure on ports to 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 follow suit this is basically like the red tractor you know the red tractor mark really isn't it for but instead of the vegetables it's for fish that's that's a very good analogy thank you chair the yeah, I, I, as, as far as it works um, food hygiene with um, uh, major processes they're all accredited to a, a standard of British retail consortium standard which is the industry accepted way of doing it um, but there's a there's a problem because there's a gap because the 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 processor then demonstrates that he's buying his fish in a responsible way but this enables them to do that very simply because they they then don't have to do any investigation of the port. They just say it's got this scheme in place yeah. um, and it will be very much beneficial to the smaller users, I believe, because that product, that shellfish or wet fish isn't going to a major processor. It might be going to a small wholesaler locally supplying restaurants or indeed uh, being sold directly to the public and that helps the fishermen uh, to be able to sell that product. That's great. Um, Councillor Robertson. Yeah, I, um, I so I support this completely. Um, I think it's a it's a great initiative, and indeed, um, I, I received an, a, an advertisement um, by email this week from a local supplier who by uh, who, who uh, is selling fish landed by boat X or a mackerel caught by by fisherman Y, and it is something that the market actually uh, wants and needs. But I just I mean it's it's a little bit dull to point it out I suppose. Um, but we've got some costings down here, um, so this is isn't coming for for free, and and it's 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 a bit vague in a way in that we've been told you know initial on-site uh, audit and certification 80 pounds per day but no idea how many days it's going to take to do it and then of course surveillance is over a longer period i would think again but we're not insignificant costs per day um and i don't want to make a big issue about this because you, you do you can't expect to get something like this for nothing um but i'm not sure how that actually works or how that will look um, you know, whenever it, it all comes to audit in terms of um, the overall cost. I mean, how many days are we talking about? And of course, you've got travel and subsistence um, at, at cost plus a 10% um, fee. And um, yeah, how much is it, are we thinking it's going to actually cost? Thank you, Councillor Robinson. If I may, Chair, mm. the um, initial cost is £400 for application and pre-assessment. That's what you pay before the auditor rocks up on site. The um, on-site audit and certification is £800 a day, um, but it actually says here that so ports with sales facilities are likely to take two to three days to audit, <coughs> excuse me, um, but our ports would only be one or perhaps two days. It's a it's a function of, of how simple the thing is. So if you if we take Sunise, for example, what are we looking at? They would be there's there's, there will be a refrigerated area next year, so there will be temperature checks on that, hygiene checks. Um, so I would not be surprised if the audit was done in one day, but at most it will be two days. So you're looking at, 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 at £1,600 uh, audit fees. Um, that runs for three years, so a surveillance audit is if you don't actually conform to standard. So it's, it's say £1,600 for your audit, over over three years plus some plus some uh, uh, subsistence costs so you're looking at maybe 1800 pounds 600 pounds a year something of that order thank you uh, thanks mike uh, councillor nolan and then after after rob it's ryan thanks chair yeah totally happy to support this really good idea give, give people certainty about what they're buying and uh, 
make sure our fishermen sign up to decent practices. It's not an academic thing, is it? I know there's some things go on. We, we, we Cornwall Council, seized half a ton of scallops uh, a couple of weeks back that were being illegally brought in. I, I don't know what the street value of a scallop is, but I think there was some money involved in that. It wasn't that long ago they found that in Plymouth they were uh, they were selling shark in fish and chip shops disguised as uh, rock and various other things. So it's really important that people know what they're getting and this is a good step towards it. So yeah, very happy to support it. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Ryan. Hello. Um, we we work with the fishermen on pretty much a daily basis um, in these ports and ports all over the UK. Um, is it, I totally agree. It's a good thing that you can trace where it's come from and responsible and everything like that with the side of that. But just out of curiosity, have um, from the Nuki St. Ives and Penzance area, have the fishermen been sounded out for this? What's their consensus of opinion for what's going on? Because obviously it's not just an admin exercise for the people in the office. They've obviously got to comply with the rules to get it um, that from their side to bring it to the shore. So um, are they on board? Have they been has it been discussed with them? Thanks. That's that's a that's a fair question. Uh, other than a straw poll, we've not carried out any any market research into what fishermen actually think of the thing. Um, but my view has been that that we are operating a port. We should operate it responsibly, and that will include fish landing. And and ultimately, um, if the fishermen want to benefit from that, they have to comply with it. Now that I know sounds a little bit heavy handed, but it's I don't see it as a as a debate. Actually, this is the way forward. We need to be responsible. And if the fishermen don't want to participate, well, they won't get the benefit because we won't be able, they won't be able to label their fish as having been landed at, at St. Ives, a responsible port or Newquay or Penzance indeed. And I, I, I totally agree with that as well. But I'm just saying if it might be worth sounding them out to say, look, um, they might have ideas on how much time it's going to take and things like this. But if ultimately it's a better product and a more sustainable product, there may be a chance they can get the price per kilo up, which again is going to be um, of their interest directly. But um, also not as, as much policing it, but it might, you also have to take into account time of making sure that stands them at both sides of the fence, not just on the side of um, the council where we've got that admin time, there's going to be time their side. So I was just wondering if it's worth speaking to them to make sure that they're not there as a whole because they're not going to speak for the whole industry but just a consensus of opinion what they're thinking of because it's, we can say yeah they have to do it if they're going to sell fish in this port or land fish in this port it has to be done um, but I just wondered if it's worth sounding them out and seeing that it's realistic it's going to happen because it might take more time to police it than actually do it but again like I said from the start I do think it's a good idea but um, yeah I just wonder if it's worth running it by people just to get a consensus of opinion. I, I think that's that's a very fair comment. Um, I, I've there's been no point in in taking it in any depth at the moment until the scheme was um, launched or close to launching, and and whether indeed the board agrees that we go ahead with it because there's yeah. not a lot of point in getting involved in discussions with people, and then then be accused of well last year you said you were going to and you haven't. Uh, I think it all should be done on a on a more timely basis, but I agree with you uh, 100%. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Ron. I think you, you have raised a really good point, actually, Ryan, and I was thinking of that myself. So, I mean, what we could do, maybe just in a recommendation, that it says what we're, I mean, as part of the application process, I'd imagine the fishermen will kind of be brought into that, into that process, maybe in some way, if not formally, then maybe just informally, could we, um, you know, could we as a, as a harbour authority, when we do make that application, Mike, could we sort of um, perhaps send out a note to fishermen? I mean, I don't, you know, it's, I, you know, I don't want to cause any issues for you at all on this, because I think this is a fantastic idea and I'm going to support it. I'm just thinking about the points Ryan's made, just to sort of, is there, if there's a way just to sort of engage with everybody as we do that application process, I think that, that, that could, could, could be quite beneficial just raising awareness and everything and obviously this is a win-win really isn't it for everybody the consumer and the fishermen thank thank you chair yes i think that's a very valid point and uh, we will uh, we will adopt that once we uh, once we start to move forward with it excellent thank you and um thanks again mike for, for bringing this and thanks for taking the initiative as well 
um, on, on this. It, it, it's really good. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask somebody to propose and second the recommendation. Oh, Chairman, before we move on, um, Tony Gerd has got his hand up. Is he, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Tony. Could you, um, Tony, please. Yeah, um, I just wondered if there's an opportunity for cost recovery from the Harvest Board or whether, because I can see the advantage to the consumer and the fishermen, but I just wondered if there's possibility for cost recovery of the ports themselves. Um, I think um, my, I would go back to my, well, this is, I suppose, yeah, in a strategic sense, I mean, what I don't want to do is help fishermen with what, you know, help, help, help them and then, and then charge them for it, <laughs> you know, um, try and, try and, um, you know, I mean, Mike, is that, is that part of it? Is that part of what, what, what's being proposed? Well, I, I, I think it's, it's all part of improving this, the standards and the way we operate and becoming more professional in what we do. Um, and I think that, that it's, it should be part of a service that we offer. I take the point about cost recovery, um, but, but, but equally, I think we need to uh, bear in mind that fishermen have, have struggled um, mm. to a degree this year. Um, and until or unless they can see a benefit, they're not going to to progress. So I think maybe it's something that we that we need to be aware of. But I wouldn't uh, recommend saying, right, we're going to do a scheme. You're going to have to do this. We'll do that, and it's going to cost you. I, I yeah. think that would be just a step too far, in my opinion. Thanks, thanks, Mike. I think that for, for for many fishermen, this this year has been incredibly tough. And uh, you know, fishermen pay fees to use our ports, and we provide a service. And I think this is part of that service. In terms of clawback or getting the, the money back, I think we probably will. If this works, the fishermen will do better. They will trade better, and um, we will get more fishermen, um, and we'll get more uh, fees back through that whole process. So I don't think we need to necessarily directly charge for it or try and. No, be I didn't suggest charging the fishermen. My question simply was, did we think that instigating this particular scheme would actually help uh, through use of the port or what have you? Would, did we see any uh, possible increase in revenue in the ports so that we could actually become cost neutral on this particular effort? But okay, thank thank you, for my chair. The, yeah, the, just quickly, Mike, if that's all right, because yeah, we need to we'll do on. yeah very quickly. The um, we don't actually charge landing fees currently, um, so it would be a net a net cost to us. But as I said, I, I believe that it's part of of having a professionally run uh, port yeah. run good standard, and um, yeah. and as the council, we should be leaders in this. Thanks, Mike. And lastly, uh, Councillor Robinson, please, and then we're going to go to debate. If that's all right. Yeah, so I, thank you for a second bite of the cherry on this, but it's just something that's crossed my mind. I mean, when, when, when we're trying to uh, sell this to the fishermen, it has been suggested that, you know, uh, that that having to to discuss it with them is important and therefore we're giving them an opportunity to come back at us. And I think keeping all those costs in-house is fine uh, because I suspect that um, that that there will be costs for the fishermen themselves directly around their own boats and how they're handling on the boats before, uh, before they're landing it, and and to me it sort of incentivises them to to um, when, when they understand that, that the larger part of the bill is probably being paid for by the harbour, uh, by the harbour's board, um, uh, and, and and would help sort of help to get them on board. Um, but again, that's the answer to a question that we have missed or misinterpreted um, uh, when there was no suggestion we were going to actually make them pay pay for it, for it indirectly. OK, yeah. so that's all my, my point finished. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Uh, that's expressed well. So we're, go, we're going to go through a roll call. For, oh, so we need to I need a proposal in a second to first, please, from the board. Yeah. Uh, OK, Councillor Robinson's proposing. Jeff, was that you? Yes, happy to second. Thank you. Um, so, Angela, please, could we do the roll call? Yeah. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson. Four. Tony Gerd. Four. Kristen Jones. 
sorry for lateness, I'm for this. It's a great idea. For for Jeff Wilson. For Miss Chairman. Sorry, Angela. Sorry. Yeah, that's um, being passed unanimously. Oh, that, that's brilliant. OK, and um, thanks again, Mike, for that. Um, so the next item on the agenda tonight, it's the um, it's number uh, six and it's the fees and charges for all of our ports and harbours for um, the year uh, 2021 to 2022, and uh, I think Jeff is leaving now. You just put an X in the box. Uh, no, I wanted to speak generally before we go into detail, and I'll leave before you get to the recommendations from UK. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, if I may. That's um, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Can I just let Chris sort of just briefly start because by all means, is that all right? Just so we know what we talking about. Um, can I just hand over to Chris quickly and then Jeff you can come in. Look, thank you. So yeah, this report introduces the fees and charges review for uh, our ports and harbours for the year 2021 to 2022. Um, and Loic, shall I wait until Jeff has left before we go through the summary? Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. Je Jeff, do you want to come in now? If I may, it's a general point um, and it's something that Richard Robinson, Councillor Robinson mentioned earlier. I just wanted to draw everybody's attention to the fact that when we're looking at charges uh, in our ports going forward, that 2000, uh, 2019 was undoubtedly the worst winter in living memory and a lot of our fishing fleet were tied up for not days on end, not weeks on end, but months on end. They came out of that with some decent weather in the middle of March, only to go straight into lockdown, not just lockdown in the UK, but lockdown in Europe, mm. which dramatically impacted on their um, their sales. Um, they then had a reasonable summer, but they've now gone into lockdown again. Uh, and looking ahead, we've got Brexit starting from the 1st of January, and there is no nobody knows at the moment the impact that's going to have on fish exports which are going to require certification and potentially sat on a key side in this country for 48 hours rotting away before they get shipped across the channel so just to bear in mind that the fishermen have had not just a rough year but a rough two years and i just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention and uh, now i'll leave the meeting thank you thank you jeff uh, Chair, it's Tristan speaking. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, Chair, I, I, um, I have a role in my business occupation as Port Operations Director of Falmouth Docks Engineering Company, AMP in Falmouth Docks. I may have a conflict of interest. I can't see one um, because we oh. generally don't offer the services that uh, are provided by this, but I would um, I'd be happy to stand out of this vote. Yeah, if you don't see anything at the moment, Tristan, I think you should. You, you're, you're okay to stay. But as soon as you fear, as soon as you see anything that could suggest that you have a conflict of interest, then you should say so and then leave. If that's all right. But if you, it, I don't don't think it's appropriate to do it because there might be. Um, you, 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 it needs to be something material, really that comes up um, that, that if you've not seen it in the report, but it comes up later on and uh, then obviously at that point you should leave. Understood. Thanks, Chair. Th thank you, Tristan. Um, so go back to Chris, could you just carry on with introducing the fees and charges and explain to the board what we're proposing here, please? Thank you, Luke. Income from fees and charges is required in order to ensure that ports and harbours meet their statutory obligations of remaining open, safe and efficient and are managed and run wherever possible without recourse to the general fund. Some of our ports and harbours make a surplus and others have to be supported by the general fund. But I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that when the harbour revision order is made, there will be a pooling of resource into a single pot controlled by the harbour board. In general this year, 2.8% increase has been applied across all fees and charges, plus RP, of RP, sorry, that is RPI plus 1%, plus rounded where it was applicable, which was to simplify invoicing and payments. Furthermore, following a review of operations and market demand at our ports and harbours, 
the following charges have been amended or introduced. I'll start with Truro. At Truro, we've removed the Turnaware lower pontoon charge. There is no pontoon installed at this location. The current visitor charge is limited to vessels up to 12 metres, with a new charge for vessels over 12 metres up to 24. Vessels over 24 metres are charged per metre. Slipway charges are reviewed and aligned with other slipways, and the layup charge ashore at Lightridge Key has been introduced. At Malpas Marine, a two hour berthing charge has been introduced, a daily tender charge introduced, and a daily passenger boat charge introduced. And we hope to encourage passenger vessels to use our Malpas Marine facility again next year. At Port Scatho, the fisherman's shelter charge has been reviewed and increased above inflation and the slipway over winter in charge has been increased above inflation. At Newquay, the slipway charge has been aligned with other slipways. The use of the fridge and ice increases above inflation. The use of the bait store increases above inflation, and these increases remain below the cost of providing these facilities, the utility charges. There's also been a review of the annual parking charge. At St. Ives, we've introduced a visitor visiting passenger craft charge for less than 50 passengers, an above inflation increase for storage ashore to bring in line with Nikki over two years, and a review of the annual parking charge. At Bude, we've reviewed the slipway charges and again aligned them with other slipways. The visitor charge has been limited to 12 metres, with a new charge for vessels over 12 and up to 24. And vessels over 24 metres will be charged per metre. We've also introduced a annual parking charge to park at the Harbour Office car park. In Penzance, we've introduced a single per metre charge for fishing vessels. These are vessels that don't large that we take a 2.5% landing fee for. We've introduced a passenger levy for those vessels moored in the harbour, in line with St Ives, a domestic passenger landing due aligned with Truro, and we've replaced, sorry, we've replaced the passenger charge per visit to a charge per day, again aligning with Nikki and St Ives and hoping to encourage more passenger boats to use the harbour. Our workboat use and dewatering charge has been introduced. Previously, this was a uh, ad hoc payment that was um, reviewed on each occasion. So we've tried to streamline so that people know that what the cost of the use of the workboat is and for dewatering their boat. We've introduced an other cargo due for plant and vehicles, particularly um, with plant going to the Isles of Scilly using um, various vessels. We've replaced under an over 12 metre charge in the wet dock with a single recreational craft charge. We are seeking to introduce a kayak rack, so therefore there will be a kayak rack storage fee. We've introduced a daily storage charge for trailers, and we've reviewed the slipway use fees and offer daily and weekly packages based on feedback we've had from people holidaying in the area. Our current visitor charge is limited to up to vessels of up to 12 metres and a new charge for vessels over 12 metres and up to 24 metres introduced. Vessels over 24 metres will be charged per metre. And we've also introduced an annual parking charge for the quayside. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, um, Chris. There's quite a lot of new things um, being introduced here. Um, thank you. So um, can I um, open this up to the board, um, this budget, please? Uh, Rob Nolan. Sorry, fees and charges. Rob. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I managed to rattle through that, so I might have missed him commenting. Um, there was an email from Jeff Brown uh, and from Wayne Rowe about charges in Newquay, in particular, the 60% increase in parking for commercial fishing tripping vessel operators, which they called extortionate. Do you have a comment on that? Thank you, Councillor Nolan. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to Chris um, on, on, on this. To just to, if you could, Chris, could you kind of maybe just bring up, compare the charges in Newquay to other parking charges around um, around the place? I will just see if I can load that date now. But Rob, thank you. Yeah, a, a good question and a, a point that I've actually um, received emails from uh, Wayne and uh, Jeff as well. Um, I think it. it the charge, whilst it is an increase, it is certainly below that of other ports, other fishing harbours. So we looked at uh, Padstow, Mevagissi, um, and some uh, harbours outside of Cornwall, and we also looked at Newlyn. The majority of those harbours are charging a fee in the region of £250. 
So we still remain 50% below the charges being used at other ports. Okay, thank you. I'll do. Um, just before Councillor Robinson, I, I, I've just got to say, I mean, I, I, obviously I've read the email as well, and um, um, e even though the, as, as Chris has just said, that the, the, we're bringing, you know, we're proposing to bring up the parking charges now for Newquay, still half of that where you would pay in many other ports in Cornwall, it's still quite a big jump. And um, I, I, I was just thinking maybe we could just, we could kind of build up to that 120 incrementally, not do it all in one go, maybe just do it over a couple of years. If the board, I mean, I'm willing to sort of put that forward, um, if the board are happy with that, or maybe you just want it to go up to 120, or maybe you want something else, maybe you don't want any increase at all, but um, just start just taking into account what Chris has just explained to us. I'm just thinking, and obviously Jeff at the beginning of the meeting explained how how difficult it's been for fishing um, over the past 12 months. Maybe that might be a, a fair way of doing it, but um, pre think about that. I'm happy to propose it. Um, Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson. Yeah, he's there. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm going to surprise probably everybody uh, on this. Um, the um, I am actually very happy with the 125 pounds up from 75 or whatever it was, um, because. Uh, but I don't think it's anywhere near enough. Um, and and uh, and I think that I wouldn't be arguing to take it above the 125 this year, given the turgid year that both the boatmen and fishermen have actually um, have, have have endured. But um, we have to understand that in St Ives here, um, I um, pushed parking to um, increase the uh, rental of reserved spaces in uh, our car parks up from something like £1,200 to £2,000 and allow over £2,000 for a business parking space in town. So it's basically guaranteed to the individual for a year. Um, and of course, all the com all the firms around town, mostly uh, shops and, and um, accommodation providers um, are, um, uh, are, are we're going to increasingly have the noses put completely out of joint whenever another type of business uh, in the town is enjoying the, the same facility, a reserved space for them um, for a fraction of that cost. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, that this year I think there has to be a general increase over the, over the coming years, but I think it would be wrong not to, um, to, to take into consideration the mind that other business people are paying the council for the use of a car parking space uh, year round. Thanks, Councillor Robinson. Just to be fair, actually, to Newquay, they, I don't think they get a guaranteed space. Uh, um, there's no suggestion they're getting uh, their own space reserved. It's still a bit of a free for all. And um, is that is that correct, Chris? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, appreciate what you're saying. Now it's still cheap, but not not a reserved space. Um, I think we've got. Phil Allen and then Rob Nolan. I can see PA. Is that is that Phil Allen? Yes, it is Chairman. Great. Phil? Um, Phil, you're on mute at the moment. You need to unmute yourself. Yes. Hi, hi Phil. You had your hand up. Yes, it's been playing up. Sorry. Uh, yes, I, I'm Phil Allen. I'm uh, chair of the Ports of Tour and Penryn Harbour Forum. Uh, just a couple of very small questions, I'm afraid. Um, the comment that slipways have been aligned with other slipways, I, I couldn't really find that in the documentation. So I wonder if that could be explained. Um, and also the slipways at Biscowan, uh, Sunny Corner, and um, at uh, uh, Church uh, Penryn have FOC against the charge, and I couldn't make out what what that meant. If if that could be explained, that would be good. Thank you. Yeah, Phil. Thank you. Um, FOC free of charge. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks very much. And and so the, the this comment that slipways are generally aligned with other slipways. How is that um, uh, represented in in increase or decrease or whatever of, of general slipway fees? So in um, in the truer charges, I'm just trying to find on the the very small print. Um, 
just bear with me. Yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't see it in the small print, even with magnifying glass, I have to say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, I did actually ask for it to be printed on A3, but it wasn't done. Now, I think I've reached the stage of my life I might need glasses on this one, Phil. Um, so I'll do it from memory. So Boss Karen Park and Sunny Corner Slipway, a vessel under six metres launching will be free of charge. There is no charge for vessel launching um, at Church Beach in um, Penryn, um, which we'll be talking about later today. And it's only when it's a vessel over six metres of Boscaran Park that you will pay the fee that is the £10 off the top of my head, which is in line with the other harbours. And, and is that the same as it always has been, or has that been increased in, in line with other harbours or decreased in line with other harbours? It has been increased, but um, the slipway, as you know, at the minute is not usable. So really that's, that's prepared for us um, clearing the slipway to get it back into use. Uh, but it also it will be minimal vessels and over the six metres that will use the slipway because of the design of the slipway um, and also the, the recovery of that, that money. So we, we felt that anything over six metres would generally book in with us. If it was below six metres, then we wouldn't charge for it. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Terry Marks. Sorry, Rob Nolan and Terry Marks. Thank you, Chair. Just, just going back to Newquay, I'm, I'm inclined to support your proposal. It's phased in, but we'd need to know how much that was going to cost the council. I don't know if, if Maritime Manager can give us any indication, because, uh, you know, unless we know what it's going to cost the council, we, we can't really make a decision, can we? Uh, Chris, would that phasing it in over a couple of years, would that, what, what roughly would we lose? Um, I'm going to ask Mike Ridgway. He knows the total number. I'm hoping off the top of his head, Mike. You know, I knew that question was coming. Um, at Newquay, we have approximately 30 commercial operators off the top of my head. So 30 times 20. 20, we go to, if we go down to 100, 600 quid. Yeah. In that case, I'd be inclined to support. If you're making a proposal that we phase it in, I'd second it. Mm. Yeah. yeah um, if uh, okay, um, I am. Thanks for seconding that. Obviously, that has to be voted on. Um, okay, so Terry Marks, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Just a question about um, the new car park charges at Penzance. They're listed there for the first time as part of the sort of Harbour Authority's area they control, plus the Albert Pier. I'm wondering whether, um, like the main Harbour car park at Penzance, run by Cornwall Council, um, there will be uh, the same pattern of charging I no fees due after 4 p.m. Thank you, Terry. It's a good question. Um, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Terry. So um, is this within the new parking areas? Is this the area that you propose that we would not charge outside of the hours? Uh, yes, it would be the same charging pattern in the in the Harbour Authority's parking area as in the main uh, harbour car park adjacent to it. Yep. OK, yeah, so um, understood. So yeah, the um, the car park charges, so we've got the South Pier and the Albert Pier, the permits. This is aimed really at the businesses and the boat operators that use the um, the keys for their operations, as with the other harbours. The actual um, the compound car park, which we're yet to establish, um, we will certainly take a lead from our neighbours in the waterfront car park. Um, and with the charges associated, will will fall in line. Understood. Many thanks. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. It's fairly predictable, I suppose. Um, having suggested that we're going to phase in for new key, it would not. If we take that route, then it would only be fair that we phase in right across the board for the for those increases in parking charges. Is that a proposal or something? Or? Well, it's more than a proposal. It's more than a proposal. It's 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 a, a statement that I believe yeah. that it would be in, it would be inappropriate not to phase them in uh, across all ha uh, harbours. We otherwise will end up with with a mutiny in St Ives if we've if we've given way on 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 new key and not and not applied the same phasing in in St Ives or or in any other harbour. This, this, the, sorry, this, okay, thanks. Chris, could you, so, thank you, Councillor Robinson. Chris, could you explain um, just are the fees in St Ives and other car parks going up in the same sort of manner as Newquay? 
Yeah, Chair, thank you. So the fees are currently charged in uh, St. Ives and Newquay, and they would be proposed to raise from 75 to 120. Um, the fee will be introduced for the first time in Penzance and uh, Butte, so they would be new charges that we would be introducing. Okay. Thanks. Um, thank you, Councillor Robinson. It's a very good point. Um, I, I will say, though, um, given I proposed this thing for Newquay, is that we have been approached by Newquay. It's obviously something that's of great concern to the fishermen there. Um, and we've not had any any representations from the others. And um, like I say, this is just over a couple of years. And uh, oh, that's Chairman, really... it's Angela from Democratic yeah. Services. Could I um, just ask that any recommendations are left to at the end of the debate, just to make my life a bit easier? Otherwise, it's going to be quite difficult. Thank you. No, no problem. That's I'm happy to do that. Um, OK, so. Any, any more questions or comments, please, on the uh, fees and charges that are being proposed? Well, Chair, Chair, I do have the charges from the other harbours if you would like me to go through for fishermen. Please. So uh, these are parking charges at Mevagissi, full-time fishermen, £250. Newlyn, £228. Padstow, £227. And um, to go outside of the county, Whitby, Fishkey, £251. OK. Are those guaranteed space? I mean, do we know um, are they're guaranteed spaces or, or, or what's the situation? There is a mixture. Some of the harbours offered yeah. guaranteed spaces, some didn't. OK. Right. Um, OK, just just on stay on, on going back to Jeff, when Jeff did, Jeff made a very strong statement at the beginning of this meeting and um, I don't think he was just talking about parking charges. Um, I think he was, you know, he was saying that fishermen all over Cornwall, basically using our ports or, or the other, the other trust ports and private ports, they've had a really tough time. So um, taking into account what Jeff has said, I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether or not we can perhaps um, not charge um, fishermen um, the the extra one percent. Obviously, it go, go, goes up by RPI, but not the one percent. And I'm just wondering what board members think about that. It's just my idea, and it's just a re, it's just a reaction really to what Jeff has said, and to a lot of conversations I've had this year with a lot of fishermen from all over Cornwall, not just in Cornwall Council harbours, but you know places like Lew and everywhere. It's been a nightmare um, for a lot of people. So I'm just thinking that that it, you know I. I, I did have a chat with Chris about this and we could possibly afford to do it as a one off. I'm happy to propose that if, if anyone wants to second it, let, let me know or if anyone has any questions, let me know. If not, we'll forget about it, but I just think it would be a good thing for us to do. Uh, Rob. Thanks, Larry. I'm just conscious I've got to think that I understand that these the finding from this um, this debate has to go to full council for verification. So even if you make this decision now, these these charges have to be signed off by full council in due course. So I just want to make people aware of that. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, John Wilson. Yeah, I'd just like to say I don't think it's appropriate to uh, raise the charges, especially this year. I think the point made by Councillor Brown was a very good one. Uh, the guys have had a very bad time this year. Um, it's not looking like it's going to get any better, given the points that he made. And I just wonder if it's appropriate to raise the charges at all. Um, good, good point. I mean, it's basically, obviously, we we it's what we can afford to do. We can't, we you know, we can't but go bust. You know, then it doesn't help anybody. If we can't maintain a balanced budget, then we're we're not able to provide the service to the fishermen and all the stuff, things like what Mike's doing and everybody else. We we can't do that. You know, we won't don't have the money, and we Cornwall Council aren't going to um, take money out of children's services to to help us. You know, no one's going to bail us out. So we do, John. We do really need to make sure we've got money coming in. Otherwise, we can't do what we need to do. Um, but if there's any leeway, if we can make, if we can, you know, if we can reduce some charges here. Um, you know, not everything, but if we could just take that 1% off 
and still still sort of get into next year and still be all right then why not that's that's my suggestion but I, I i agree if we could not raise charges for fishermen at all that would be amazing i'm just concerned that it it, it it's just not possible yeah but we don't we, you know we don't know what's going to happen really uh, that's just my point yeah it's tricky times and went to go to the art for the art masters going to tell them there's going to be an increase and, mm. you know, I, I wonder how that's going to be met i don't think it's going to be that could, well. could, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can I just go to Chris, please? Could you, Chris? Could you just let me know what, 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 what? Um, could you compare the two, those two situations where we, the first situation is we don't increase it, we only increase it by RPI, and then the second situation we don't increase it by anything for fishermen. Could you explain? Are there, is there, is there going to be a difference in terms of our um, viability as a harbour authority? No, it would, it would certainly have an impact on that, yes. Um, we would have to go away and do those figures to, to assess how big an impact. Um, but, uh, the, the figures that we've gone through in our budget monitor earlier do indicate the impact that we're already receiving as Harbour Authority. Um, and I think it's important to note as well that potentially 21 to 22, we might be standing alone as the Harbour Board with the HRO in place. Okay. So what about if it was just one, if we just didn't increase it by the 1%? It would be a calculation we would we would have to run through and, and assess the impact on the business. Okay, thank you, Chris. Well, I'm still. I, uh, sorry, somebody. Uh, Ryan. I'm happy to second you, Lerick, on the um, 1%. On the 1%, thank you. Following on from what Jeff has said, with the fishermen having a tough year, although it's, uh, if we financially are in a position to do it, which obviously somebody else needs to crunch the numbers, um, yeah. you want the fishermen coming back and ultimately to then keep paying money from years to come. But even if the 1% the can be deferred to next year or something, something like that, but I'm happy to second that. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Um, I can see there's other hands up. I'm not too sure who it is. Yeah, though, Pete Marsh wants to come in. Okay, thank you. Pete. Th th thanks, Chairman. Um, just, just the, my, my only point would be that charges across the environment portfolio in the widest sense. So we've got bowling clubs, we've got, we've got um, concessions, we've got um, retail units. We'll, 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 we'll all be at that RPI plus plus one percent, just based on on the council's uh, shortfall and budget predictions for next year, which show at the minute a thirty-six million pound gap in in the council's budget for for next year. And uh, at the minute, whilst this isn't entirely uh, ring fenced, at some point it, it it will be. So I've got I've got some some sympathy with 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 the way the debate's going, but would equally just point out that you will find. A whole range of other customers in that environment space with an RPI plus one percent across the board. So if, if you make exceptions, it's it's for you to, to choose to do that. But you can, if you make exceptions, that 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 will stand out against um, against what will happen elsewhere across the portfolio. But it's still within your gift to choose to recommend that if if you wish to do so. I just wanted to point out the potential disparity. That, thank, thank you, um, Peter. That's that's really helpful, and it's 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 important that you have made that. I will go back to what I will refer back, refer the board back to what Jeff said at the beginning of the meeting. It has been an absolutely before the pandemic. It was really tough for fishermen anyway, and I do think personally we should make an exception. Um, based on on the information that I've had from speaking to fishermen this year, it's just been a nightmare. And I think I, I, I'm still happy to propose this if if Ryan's happy to second it. Um, and obviously we'll get we'll, we'll do that yeah, when we get to the end. Thank you, Ryan. Um, okay. Chairman, it's Angela here from Democratic yeah. Services. Um, we've got I'm looking at the agenda. There are 11 recommendations, but I'm at a bit of a loss as to what is actually being proposed at the moment and what's happening with those 11 recommendations in the agenda. Um, just that we don't, for fishermen, we do not um, 
across the fees and charges for fishermen, we do not in, we only increase by RPI. We don't add the one percent. So will the rest of the eleven recommendations stay the same? Um, no, they will all. They, they will all they will all check well wherever wherever fishermen charges are, 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 are listed in 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 each one and then, then that will take effect i guess yeah sorry to be pedantic yeah. about this i'm still a bit lost can you tell me exactly what you want me to put in the recommendation because um, i'm not following it okay thank you um chris could you could you kind of help um with this please because i'm not quite sure how it works technically speaking I thought that was heading my way. Thanks, Lou. Um, yeah, so essentially it would affect all of the recommendations where there are fishing vessels operating because we do the fees and charges per port. Yeah. So essentially every single one of those would need amending where there is a registered fishing, fishing vessel charge. Um, is anyone else going to help me with some wording on this? Chairman, could we not propose on block subject to your amend subject to your amendment? Yeah, does that work, Angela? Oh, right. So they'll be all as set out in the report subject to your, your amendment about um, um, uh, not increasing by the 1%. Yeah. OK. OK. And I take it we're not doing a roll call for each um, each of those 11 it's, recommendations. Yeah, are we? I think for the minutes, I don't see any need to take a vote for no. each individual one. Yeah. On block, Chairman. Great. OK, thank you. So, Councillor, Councillor Robinson. Just just to introduce another complication. Well, I didn't introduce a complication. It's actually here in the, in the printed word. You know, if we get down to car parking, which is obviously in excess of, of the um, the inflationary increase, um, but we get down to the detail in it. I'm standing here with my uh, sitting here with my magnifying glass in hand, uh, and the parking permits that we're talking about are for commercial fishing oblique tripping operators so it's not just fishermen that we're talking about it's it's two two different categories of of users um being um having to carry those increased charges so if you're yeah. so if you're restricting it to fishermen uh one percent you're actually um not um um giving any concession to the to the other half of that in terms of parking the other half being the the, the boat trip organizers and their parking at 125 pounds as proposed rather than 75. Yeah, I think I was just talking, I'm, I, I was really referring um, just for, for clarity to mooring fees and um, yeah, mooring fees basically, things like that. Uh, Tony. Thank you, Chairman. There you go. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, it seems to me that everything is getting overly complicated mm -hmm. to apply a single vote to. And therefore, um, I would propose that we we go with um, what the Marine Manager has um, suggested, or you break the subject down into its component parts. Otherwise, it'll be very, very difficult to vote, make, make a single vote on what's been said. Yeah, um, Rob. Yeah, I'm trying to be helpful here. I mean, I'm not sure when the next board is, but I think trying to do this not on the hoof, but it's very complicated. There's 11 recommendations. We're not quite sure how each bit applies to each. There's a clear feeling from the meeting that there is potentially we shouldn't increase the fees related to fishermen by as much as others. But a lot of the other stuff is related to leisure craft and other stuff. Yeah. So, is I don't know, it's a question. I'm not saying is there a possibility of deferring the report, clarifying the situation in relation to the fisherman aspect, and then come back with some clear recommendations. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, I agree because it, it, it's just it is quite tangled actually, and it will be very difficult to administrate and just to work out. So. Um, 
is yeah, it Chris is it meeting is in January yeah wait I don't we, we need to get this this needs to go in for the first full council of next year doesn't it so I don't know yeah. if that's possible um Peter no I don't I don't, I, I don't think we're going to be able to 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 come back I think all the recommendations could 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 stand that you, you you're recommending each you could then add an additional recommendation that says with respect of recommendations one two three eleven that the only exception being that for fees and charges in respect of the birthing and mooring of of fishing vessels that those charges are shown in recommendations one to eleven um, should should only apply a RPI increase in respect of, of those elements and that would probably that's exactly what I wanted to do so that would, yeah that would probably do it because what even though recommendation five may or may not have some bits of fishermen in it it's very clear still that what you meant you've accepted five as it stands mm -hmm. but with an overarching 12th recommendation that says that that, that that you're making that that exception but I think you'd have to clarify what you mean the exception for so that it's it it's not um it, it's it's not oblique afterwards that you, you you're explicit that it's relating to to to, to birth in a mooring rather yeah. than all charges so so you've helped them with those which is their principal costs i would imagine um we probably could could cobble together a, a recommendation as i've just read out um, I've not written it down, but we could have another go at it, Angela, if if, if you wish. Um, yeah, so I so um, I mean, obviously, if the board agree with it, so it'd be as set out with an additional recommendation number 12 that in respect of the recommendations 1 to 11, the only exception is that fees and charges for the birthing and mooring of fishing vessel, vessels be subject to RPI only. Is that right? Okay. That's what I, yeah, that's that's what I had in mind. I wasn't going to go for every single thing that fishermen do in all of the ports. Otherwise, it's, you're just it's going to that's going to be a minefield. Um, and and thanks, Peter, for for expressing that in a in a verbal way. Could we go to Rob Nolan then? Um, then Chris Jones, please. Thank you, Sharon. We'll get to the point that I'm sorry we started this. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was happy with the idea that we would phase in the parking at Newquay and perhaps St Ives and that that would cost us we heard 600 pound so perhaps 1200 pounds to do that we, Cornwall Council can surely afford that and it's a gesture I don't know what the one percent means what you, that you are proposing I don't know what it means in money and I know that budgets in neighborhoods are extremely tight so I'd be really anxious about supporting that without any haven't I haven't seen the cost and if that turns around to, if that turns out to be thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds then I can't possibly support it because the money isn't isn't there in neighborhoods so I would only be prepared to do to support phasing in over two years of, of the parking and that's it for me okay thank you Chris could you just roughly tell tell us how much we would stand to lose then if we um, went along with the uh, only the RPI um, is is in, uh, fishermen's birthing and mooring fees are increased by RPI only and not the one percent? What would the um, negative effect be overall, please? Chair, sure, I would need to go away and to go through the charges and then produce a report for that. Uh, but I would point out that a lot of the fishing charges are also tied in with um, trip boats. So I think we need to make the recommendation clear: is this registered fishing vessels, i.e., those who are formally registered to fish? Um, and also with the parking, I think we need to make clear is <coughs> is it all of the parking charges across all of the harbours that we're going to review or is it just unique in St. Ives because I'm trying to streamline the charges to simplify invoicing. Sorry, do you mean just for the parking or with the, the extra proposal? So the, the, the two proposals, the first one is the um, for the fishing vessels, it needs to be registered fishing vessels, yeah. so those that are fishing commercially. Um, and then there's the separating of those when we go through to do this from the other vessels um, and the, the trip boats that are within the fees and charges because of the way the fees and charges are structured. Um, and then also the parking, we need to clarify then, are we doing the phase in parking across all of the car parks or are we only singling out the North Coast harbours? 
yeah, my, my proposal was only for Nuki. I, I wasn't going to include St. Ives in that, but I'm happy to include it. Rob Nolan seemed to suggest that he was thinking of that, which I'm happy to, so I'm happy to modify that. Um, and I don't think it was in relation to any other harbours, but I, you know, unless anyone has any other thoughts on that. Um, Tony. Yeah, again, I come back. You need to ar arrive at a situation with a democratic vote is a yes or a no. At the moment, there are so many options being talked about. So either you vote on Chris Jones's proposal and then produce a counter proposal for specifically what you're talking about, or we're not we're not going to get into a position where we can vote yay or nay on a single item because you've you've with respect you've complicated it so much that nobody really knows what what a yes vote would mean and what a no vote would mean. Okay, thank you, Tony. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, all, all I'm trying to do really is um, take on board what Jeff said at the beginning of the meeting and try and and, and do something something affordable to help to help the fishermen with their with their fees. Um, and I'm sorry that it's so complicated. I didn't think it would be. Um, so I can only apologise for that, but I still, I still would like to do something. So all, all I can suggest is that we vote on it. And I, I think I'm fairly clear. So the first, the first proposal um, that, that I think Rob is seconding that the charges for Nuki, the car parking charges, are not increased from 75 to 120 pounds. Um, but act, well, they are, but not not immediately. So they go up to 100 for the first year. And then the second year, 120. And I think the loss to um, us as a harbour authority for doing that is going to be about 600. So if we did it for St. Ives as well, that would be 1200. Um, and I'm happy to do that. Um, you know, I'm happy to change the proposal for St. Ives and New Key if Rob is happy with that. Uh, yeah, yes, Chair, I'll be happy with that. OK, so that's one thing that's clear. Um, and then the second proposal, which I understand Ryan the second did is that berthing and mooring charges for fish, fish, fishing boats, registered fishing vessels, are increased um, by RPI, which is 1.8 per cent. Chairman, can I have the wording for the proposal in respect of the car parking, please? Because I'm still getting a bit confused. Sorry, yeah. What so the wording, for the, the wording for the car parking um, proposal is that parking charges, um, annual annual charges, annual permit for Newquay Harbour is increased from £75 to £100 in the first year. Hang on, increase from... Yes. And then the second year from 100 to 120 And it's Nuki, sorry, Nuki and St. Ives. Um, and yeah, it would be easier for me if we're going to take a vote that we've got one mover and seconder for the entire lot. I don't know if that's possible. I doubt it. Okay. Um, I'm just happy to do that. I'm happy to second it. Okay. Uh, Rob, Rob's already agreed to second that one, Councillor Robinson. Yeah, uh, that's, sorry, Chairman, I'm not happy to vote for the RPI. Okay. Just right, one, one, to because I don't understand it. Then, so it'll be, yeah, uh, it'd be better to do it separately because yeah, I'm getting completely issues, confused. Yeah. So it's the 11 recommendations in the report plus a 12th recommendation that is, um, will be taken as one vote, and that's moved by yourself and seconded by Ryan Kitchener. And then you want to take another vote on the parking charges for Nuki and St Ives. Is that right? Yes. And that's moved by you, is it, and seconded by Councillor Nolan? Yes. OK, thank you. Um, sorry, Peter, you want to come in? I, I, just, I just wonder whether to, to keep it simple for, for Angela, you could you could just add some additional wording against each of the one, each of the recommendations, and vote on them then in 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 turn. So we we could add 
the wording around fishermen to each of the recommendations. And then when you get to New Quay and to St. Ives, you could add some additional, an additional section for, uh, for those particular recommendations, whichever number it is, five and eight, I need to just find the report on my other PC. Um, that, that might be easier and then you're crystal clear as to what you're doing on each. But you, you, you can equally wrap it up in that overarching bit, whatever, whatever. Angela, do you do you think there's a there's a strong preference there for absolute clarity? Because otherwise we're into a 12th recommendation that tries to then adjust. It approves New Key and it approves St Ives and then it tries to do almost recommendation 12 and 13 needs to then deal with with True and uh, not True, oh, sorry, in St Ives and New Key. Okay, I'm sorry I'm getting confused about this. So are you saying that we go with the 11 recommendations as set out in the report plus the 12th one that I've just um, noted and then we just amend the new key, I, um, recommendation three for new key? No, I'm, I'm almost now suggesting that, that let me just find the recommendations one, 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 one moment in front of me. Um, I'm now, sorry, I'm very confused. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. We can, we can soon, we can soon resolve it. I think it's probably simpler if if we go through each each one in turn, and then it's very clear. It, it, it's very clear rather than trying to overarch it. So it, it, we don't need additional words, very many additional words. I'm just trying to find the the right report. Apologies, I'm just scrolling down. So we take a vote on each I, each recommendation. Yes, item one would say the fees and charges out. Respect of the Port of Truro be adopted with the exception of commercial fishing in, 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 be adopted with the exception of mooring and berthing fees for commercial fishermen where the increase will be restricted to 1% from the 1st of April 21. So you do that for each. That would be the same thing. If there's no commercial fishermen in some of them, we don't need it. And probably the harbour master can, can guide us on on where fishermen are involved and then when we get down to new key recommendation three would say the fees and charges outlined in this report in appendix one um, be adopted with the exception of a phased increase in car parking charges for from uh, from 75 pounds to 120 pounds um, in the period 1st of April 21, because we can only do one budget year at a time. I think we'd have to make the decision to, to, to increase it again next year. I think you could probably only do it once at a time. You can't set future budgets, I don't think. So we'd be saying in respect of New Key Harbour, be adopted and with the exception of the car parking charges, which should be amended to increase from £75 to £100. Um, and, and with the exception of commercial berthing, and more in for commercial fishermen again. So if we can we can come up with some wording like that. If 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 members are minded to go with with that, I can quickly try and jot something into the chat box that I think would 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 perhaps give some clarity. Would that would that help? It would for me, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank thank you, Peter. Um, I need to wrap this up then now, really. Um, Ian and then Tony and then Rob, thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Luke. Uh, um, I, I applaud what you're trying to do here. I think it's really, really good, but I'm just nervous that it, there might be some unintended consequences that we haven't thought about because it's sort of done on the hoof. Um, um, you know, other, other boat users uh, or other people might have uh, further grievance that they haven't been um, equally um, uh, given a concession or a, or a reduction. Um, are we sure? Are we absolutely sure that's not going to be the case? Because so I'm happy to vote for it if that is. But you know, if it's going to cause lots of noise, it uh, well, unfortunately a lot of a lot of a lot of non um, a lot of commercial bait operators have been um, affected by the pandemic hugely. 
um, this year. They've not, um, some of them are lost out on grants because they haven't had premises, business rate, they're paying business rates on. And, and it's been a nightmare for a lot of people involved in, in, in the pools and harbours, not just fishermen. I don't, I don't, I don't deny that at all, Ian. Um, I think what the point, the reason why I'm, I'm proposing this is because, as Jeff has said, they were having a tough time already. It's been, it was already really difficult for them. And, and it's really just a one off making an exception for fishermen based on that. I'm not suggesting that anyone else has had it easier or, 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 or better. It's purely because of just the, it's the commun, 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 cumulative effect of this pandemic on the fish, fishermen bearing in mind what they already went through in 2019. Um, Rob. Thank you. Rob, uh, sorry, it doesn't, sorry, it doesn't quite help me in that I, um, I want to vote against your proposal, but it means I have to vote against the entire, sh when, if you go for number one, I have to vote against the entire thing, don't I? No. That's the point I was going to make. No, whereas I would have thought if you just proposed a separate amendment at the beginning. That's what I was that, trying to do, just my own little amendment. And if you want to vote it out, just do it and then we'll we'll move on. That's what I was hoping to do, but sorry, we don't have to move do it on every one of them. Then I yeah. okay, that's what you want to do. Fine. Well, hopefully, yeah. I don't know if that's possible. Um Tony. Yeah. So my question, if we have your amendments to um paragraphs one to eleven and we want to vote no, does that mean that Chris Jones's suggestion is thrown out the window? If we vote yes, we have your amendment to it all. But if we vote no, does what, what does that mean? I think my understanding is if you vote no to my amendment, then my amendment fails and we just go back to the substan substantive, well, the recommend, the main recommendation, which is the, which is the fees and charges but as they're set out. To, then we'd have to have another vote to confirm we agree with what yes. we put forward. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and lastly, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I do just think we need to be very careful of unintended consequences. Um, one of those would be some of the charges are shared between uh, passenger boats, so particularly in Niki and St. Ives, where the trip boats are on the same charge as the fishing vessels. And also it would not um, have any impact on the fish landings into Penzance, where they pay a two and a half percent value of their land into us. So they, they wouldn't benefit from uh, the gesture that you, uh, that you propose. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so Angela, can we just vote on my amendment first on, on the two amendments? The, what, the first one is the parking charges and then the second one is the increase. I'm Sorry. Um, chairman, I'm completely uh, and utterly lost. I don't know. We haven't had a mover and a seconder. Um, I just don't know where to start because you can only have an amendment when you've had something moved and seconded um, already. Uh, well, I, I've moved, and I think Councillor Nolan has seconded the um, proposal for Newquay and St Ives car parking charges. I thought um, Pete Marsh was suggesting that we put and uh, make amendments to all eleven recommendations. We, let, let, we can we can go back, Angela, and just do the let, let's let's just establish whether members are, are minded to to support the the reduction in or the smoothing of the charge for New Quay and for St Ives as a, as a starting point. If that, that, that then can stand, if that, if that, let's see if there's support for that. And then the second element is whether the support for, for, for the commercial um, reduction for commercial fishermen. And if that stands, then we'll just need to work out the, how we craft the recommendations. I don't know if that, is in order in democratic services world um, whether we need to have a very firm and clear written proposal. Oh, back to what I have then. So we're going back to the 1 to 11 recommendations with the addition of the 12th one about the birthing and the mooring fees being subject to RPI only. Yeah, 
and then we're going to have an extra recommendation about the parking the new key harbour in st ives is that correct yeah. so we could take a vote on the first one which deals with the one to 11 about and the birthing and mooring fees which is being moved by councillor rich and seconded by ryan kitchener so we'd take a vote on that and then we would take a separate vote on the other um about the parking charges which is being moved by councillor rich and seconded by councillor nolan does that sound like a way forward that would be great okay thank you right um are we ready to go to the vote if that's okay thank you okay so first of all i'm going to take votes for the recommendations one to eleven with the additional twelfth um recommendation about the birthing and mooring fees um being subject to rpi only okay right i'll just do a roll call councillor evans abstain councillor brown oh councillor brown's not here councillor may for councillor nolan against councillor rich for councillor robinson or Tony Gerd. Against, I think. Tristan Jones. For. Ryan Kitchener. For. Shipley. Against, but only because I'm thoroughly confused and I'm worried about the unintended consequences, but happy to be convinced otherwise. Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Uh, abstain. I'm also very confused. I'm just counting up the totals at the moment, if you bear with me. OK, so that's been carried by five votes in favour, three against and two abstentions. Um, so now I'll um, move on to the second part, which was um, about the parking charges for Newquay and St Ives Harbour. Um, being increased from £75 to £100 for the first year and second year from 100 to 120 OK. Um, Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Uh, Tony Gerd. Tony Good. Abstain. Easton Jones. For. Ryan Kitchener. For. Ian Shifferley. Abstain. Sin. For. Thank you, sir. Um, that's been carried by eight votes in favour and two abstentions. Thank you, Angela. Um, are we going to now go to the main? Um, is that it? Yes, that's it now. OK, thank you. So we'll go to the next um, item on the agenda. That's uh, Church Beach Slipway in Penryn on page 89 and I think it's um, Captain Killingback to report please. Thank you Chairman, um, just bear with me. That's the camera on. Um, yes Chairman, this item has been um, informally discussed a few times at the board and formally discussed um, in 2017. I'm not a great fan of reading from the report but the executive summaries reasonably concise and I'll try and be fairly quick. Um, executive summary, the Church Beach Slipway has not been refurbished as a contractor, has not yet been appointed as resolved by the Harbours Board at a meeting in April 2017. The project was reviewed by the ICB sub board on the 25th of July 2017. The decision was endorsed subject to uh, Cormac quoting under £90,000, if over, then should go out to tender. After two attempts, including significant valued engineered modification of the original design, 
the council's internal contractor was unable to conduct the work within the budget set by the ICB subboard. Um, during the absence of the previous maritime manager, the interim head of service for natural environment instructed the harbour master to stop the internal direct award process. Whilst the project has been kept on the maritime business plan following early approval by the board, it could not be delivered within the, in, within the budget set by the investment commercial subboard using the internal direct award process. An alternative or phased approach is required to deliver a refurbished uh, facility or um, abandoned. So I have set out four options in the report, Chairman. Um, I've also consulted uh, with the nearest stakeholders who um, include the um, former um, chairman, two former chairmen of the um, Harbours Forum and um, haven't had a chance to discuss this with the maritime manager, but um, I'll, I'll give you that outcome in a minute. It was a phone call last minute just before the meeting. Um, the issue really is, is, is delivering value for money, which sometimes at odds with lots of other parts of the council. Uh, we do like to use our commercial uh, contractors, some of whom are quite specialised. Um, I spent a lot of time and it was very frustrating to try and work on the internal direct award process. It, I followed every process I could and got to a stage where we couldn't meet the budget set. Some of the uh, Cornwall Council members um, may um, have a view on using the internal direct award process. I'm not allowed to use, um, I'm not allowed to manage any process over £50,000 under the contract procedures uh, rules set by the Council. Um, in drafting the report, the recommendation is fairly simple uh, as printed, which is to note the report. I thought it might be prudent given there was a change um, in personnel and we have a new maritime manager who has spent some time with the main sponsor of this project from the board, which is Councillor May. Um, the legal advisor to, uh, who, who cleared this report was not comfortable with repeating a recommend a, or a resolution, which was the maritime manager as um, given the delegated authority to appoint a contractor. So on for that reason, it's it's not a recommendation of this report. Um, I believe if we were allowed to go out to the commercial market, we might get something like the original budget. And it continues to be a frustration um, following the, these quite convoluted processes in delivering something. Um, we've tried to include all the information, including the previous board report for new members of the board not familiar with the project. And um, the uh, definition of a slipway, this whilst we might call it a slipway, has no vehicular access should probably be considered to be a um, drying hard or a launching platform for small craft which can be carried down the footpath with access. So in the original report was detailed there was not a lot of income um, but there was considerable stakeholder dividend. Um, so it's difficult uh, given um, sort of value for money to say anything else, um, the local stakeholders are an association, they're the Penryn River Users Association. Um, I, I outlined the four options in the report, which was continue with a commercial contract um, outside of the internal uh, process. Um, there were two uh, options I was asked to look at by the maritime manager, the current maritime manager. Um, in fairness to him, he doesn't know the outcome from the, lo the local stakeholders. And the fourth option was to abandon the project. Um, so the local stakeholders have actually told me tonight that they either want to see the full project 
um, but were concerned about the cost or um, that we abandon the project and the um, the options of a, a dinghy launching half width strip by length or a half length um, option they didn't think were value uh, any value or merit which is new to our maritime manager so um, my recommendation is that the, the harbours board note the report and I believe that uh, the current maritime manager is empowered to um, to delegate or, or he's got the delegated authority to actually appoint a contractor within the rules and perhaps working with the senior officers and keeping uh, local members um, briefed accordingly. Thank you, Chairman. Th thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mark. And that's that's great. So it looks like something's finally going to happen which is really good news. Um, Phil. Phil Allen, you've got your hand up. Yes, I'm sorry, my mute button tends to get stuck. Uh, yes, obviously from the Harbour Forum, we've discussed this uh, many times, and I suppose the the, um, the best thing for me to do is to, to report what our recommendation was the last time we discussed it, which was January 2019. Uh, and um, the end of our, our um, discussion was forum members are aware of the large effort put in by past members and officers over many years into returning this slip to serviceability. However, few members now have any knowledge of the project's inception. Uh, the forum agreed that if the tender process returned a cost near the intended budget, which we've heard this evening was uh, £90,000, then the forum would continue to, uh, sorry, then the project would continue to receive the forum's support. And as I say, we have discussed this over many times, but I think we're saying exactly the same as, as Captain Killingback, that unless uh, it comes out at a price near £90,000 and satisfies the specification that the users have set out, which is that they have a hard slip, uh, full width uh, and full length, uh, then the forum couldn't see uh, good value in doing something lesser than that or for something that was a greater price. Um, I'm, I'm not clear exactly what um, uh, taking a resolution tonight will, will achieve other than if it were a straight uh, um, vote between uh, either achieving the full specification for £90,000 or less uh, or abandoning the project uh, in total, those seem to be the only options uh, left to us. Uh, certainly, following the um, the consultation with users that Captain uh, Killingback has has undertaken over the last few days. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Phil. Um, could I could I ask maybe is, is it more appropriate for Chris to come come back on that, or or, or, or maybe is it Mark? I'm happy for Chris to comment. Um, I have worked with him. I'm mm. sorry to drop up, drop on him that his uh, proposals didn't find favour with the local stakeholders, but that was just reported to me prior to the meeting. I tried a few times to contact the, the new chairman of uh, Penryn River users, but it was only tonight that I managed to get hold of her. So uh, sorry, Chris, to drop you in it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Mark. No, I, I think um, I think we are going to find it very difficult and challenging to to bring this in uh, within the the budget that is there, um, particularly given the access to that site. Um, so yeah, I, I think we'll we'll see what we can do. We'll go back out, but I, I do think um, the do nothing close facility is probably going to be the only viable option if it's the full um, slipway that is required. Thank you, Chris. Um, I can see Ian's put a, 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 an axe down, but Mary's come in as well. And as Mary's the member for Penryn, if Ian, if it's all right, I'll bring in Mary now. Um, yeah, yeah, I've listened carefully, looked at the papers. Um, I did meet Chris back in the summer just after lockdown, which I was grateful for. Um, I can remember the conversation as Mark will with um, 
the last finance director um, and I know he didn't want us spending, I think it was 120 at the time. Yeah, it was. You know, is, is this money pen rims or isn't it um, that is ring fenced? Um, this has been going on so long. This has been going on um, since probably five or six years now. You know, people have come and they've left. Um, they've gone up country. There's good people that, you know, live in our town that have used this facility. And now for an extra few thousand, we're just being, you know, I think restrained from using our own money. Uh, yeah, it's not accessible by car, but how many years has it, has it been like this? You know, this is the way it is, unfortunately. Um, I don't think just by abandoning it, I don't think this is treating the people who use, use this port fairly. I really don't. This is not just about the River Users Association. You know, these, this is about people in the future. Um, this report is to note, um, you know, we talk about consultations. Now, I don't know how many consultations we've had in the past, but what money is spent around Penryn? Very little. Even when we had the pontoon, it took us five years to get that. You know, Mark is doing his best, Andy's done his best. But I really think if you abandon this, you're letting the people who love the river, you know, I love the river to walk by, but I'm not a user. Um, and I really think you were letting them down. You've got offices around this table tonight. You know, do something. Get hold of it and do something. You know, Mark is doing his best. He needs some help. Why can't you support him? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor May. Um, I'll, 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 if I can just, Chris, before you come back on that, if I can just go to Ian and then um, Richard and then um, hand it back to you, if that's all right, Chris. Thank you. Ian. Uh, thanks, Lloyd. Um I thought it was a, um, a helpful report. It would have been not having um, background in this, and I uh, apologise for that. Um, it would have been helpful if there had been some diagrams or pictures uh, just to give um, a greater sense of what we're talking about. Um, I suppose my main concern is that um, the, um, the sum of money against the what seems to be quite limited use doesn't necessarily seem to be um, good value for the, for the people in Penryn. And if we were going to spend 100,000 quid um, or 90,000 quid, um, I'm sure there are other things that we could spend it on would, would have a much better impact than uh, dishing up a, an old jetty that hardly anyone uses. Sorry to paraphrase. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, and Councillor Robinson, and then, and then I'll hand it back to Chris. Councillor Robinson. I, I switched my microphone off rather than on. Um, I'm a bit confused uh, with some of the numbers in here, uh, particularly on page uh, 91. Um, um, again, measuring that against the uh, comments on page 93, paragraph six, uh, uh, section six, where it says little or no income to be derived from the refurbished structure is considered an amenity and a stakeholder dividend. But we go back to um, the uh, sentence on paragraph uh, on page 91, it begins the only derived income from this facility is two winter layups and occasional bookings for large vessels, but goes on to say that additional income is derived from uh, the, the racks, dinghy racks at, at £1,200, and then the slipway does support access to swinging moorings in the port, from which an uh, 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 income, further income is achieved of, of £30,000. So, so are we saying that, that that is real, that is money that is being generated by, by this, by this um, uh, but a slipway or trying whatever it is it's going to be referred to, try, uh, um, or is is it is it um, is it money that would be lost if we if we didn't support the refurbishment of, of of the facility? And if it is money that would be lost in many ways, it's saying to me that that in in essence 
um, at 30, over thirty thousand pounds a year, you know, within um, three years, it, it's it's paid itself back, or indeed, if it was up to one hundred and twenty for four years, it'll be paying itself back. So, you could have a very quick explanation about those. Um, thank you, Councillor Robinson. So we have a range of comments um, being made. Actually, Chris, could you come back on Councillor Robinson's co um, question about the income from the slipway? Uh, yeah. And then we're yeah, absolutely. And I think if I focus there on the, the swing and more income of £30,000 a year, um, it was that that led my proposal to refurbish the slipway, but to build a narrower slipway, not the full width, um, to facilitate the access for those, those users who generally use um, dinghies from our racks to go out to there. Um, and I think an important factor here is that traditionally this slipway has been used for boats drying out to scrape and paint anti-foul on the vessel. But I'd like to draw your attention to uh, point seven, the Environment Agency and hull fouling and the removing of this activity is now being advised to be taken place in boatyards with full containment of the anti-fouling waste. Um, and I think there's a risk that by going back to the full width, we're facilitating vessels to go onto the slipway to be scrubbed, um, which leads to that environmental concern. OK, got it, thanks. Um, could you come back on um, or Mary's um, point, please, Chris? Yes, yeah, certainly, Larry. Yeah, I met with Councillor May um, just after lockdown. We had a very pleasant walk around uh, around the slipway and, and Penryn. Um, I'm very keen that we, we do invest in Penryn, but that we invest in the right um, structure. Now, if, if this is decided by the stakeholders there, that this is what they would wish to have, um, then clearly we will look at that. But I wouldn't want to exclude any other project um, or to uh, invest into this structure over the odds that we need to facilitate the use, i.e. dinghies, access in moorings. And the kikers can still use this um, slipway. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, could you come back on Ian's? question please which i think Ian was um sorry i can't it was it was really along the same lines um as chris has just said if there's um yeah. other good projects um would they be better um value to the people of penryn rather than this jetty because i'm not familiar with this jetty uh, as i said there's no sort of pictures or drawings in there is it is this really worth dishing up compared with other projects that might uh, offer better value Yeah, Ian, um, I, I think um, our thoughts are, are quite similarly aligned here. I'd, I'd like to, to invest into Penryn. Um, I'm keen to ensure that we invest in the right projects in Penryn, um, but taking into account the use of the facility and also the environmental considerations that are, are now changing as we move forward. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chris. I, I'm going to let Ryan come in now and then, and then I'm going to uh, let Councillor May have the last word. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm local to Pamran and um, I use the um, it quite a lot to be honest. And um, with a night we're spending one hundred and twenty thousand pounds. I agree, there's a lot more people in Pamran now. So by percentage of people that use the water, there's obviously more chance um, and more boats that may come to the area. So is it not worth? You've got a place there on Pamran Bridge that's accessible from the car. Could we not extend the pontoons uh, lesser than, a, I assume it's going to be less than £120,000. So you could do it, say, for thirty to £50,000, extend the pontoons there, which give the option for the tenders. Um, you can still use the slipway if it's safe to do so for the kayaks and things like that, but you've got more chance of recouping the income on the Penrith Bridge site, because one, you've got the parking there already, so you've already got the infrastructure, but just extend it. So, um, where the pontoon is existingly, um, as you come into the port, you've got another row of it, or maybe another two if we can go out into it. And there's obviously going to be restrictions of boats coming in, but just as an idea, I think the money would be better spent that way, so you can actually recoup some income and have up to six. I think it's up to 16 foot boats there, and then a space for the tenders as well, if you like. Um, Chris. Yeah, I think that's a worthy consideration. I think that's where we probably need to go back to the stakeholder and talk about other projects in the area before we make the final call. Councillor May, do you have a view? Well, if it's going to take as long as the first pontoon, and you know, when you look at the length of this, um, I, I just think we've got the money there. It, it's been an ask. It's been on the table for about six years. 
The thing is, you know, I've asked for a seat. I can't even get a seat. We've got nearly six hundred thousand pounds in our in our funds. You know, and it's a job to spend any money. You just don't want to spend any money in our port. Why? Thank you, Councillor. It's an amenity. It's an amenity. Yeah, Councillor May. Absolutely. Pay for amenities. They don't. They don't. Absolutely, Councillor May. When we met, we, we spoke about um, looking at projects in, in Penryn. I have no objection at all to investing in Penryn as, as a facility and as an amenity. Um, I think we do need to make sure that investment is in the right area where people will use it, but also that it meets the current demand. So we're seeing a lot more people going over to paddle boards, kayaks. So facilities that meet those, uh, those demands, I think, are quite important. Thank you, Chris. Um, Councillor Brown. Yeah, thank you. I've, I've got great sympathy with Mary because I know that she's been trying to get this through for six years at least, and it must be really frustrating. Um, the question I've, I've got is, um, in terms of drawing a vessel out, I appreciate that you shouldn't be anti-fouling uh, mm -hmm. without some sort of containment, but there's lots of other reasons to draw a vessel out if you've got underwater damage, prop, shaft, that sort of thing. Are there alternative provisions where vessels can dry out in the area? The facility um, on the slipway is quite limited in the sort of vessel it could take. I, I think it would be definitely worthwhile looking at a drying grid, uh, a Penryn Key or in that vicinity to facilitate that, but for a wider range of vessels. Um, there are some facilities to dry, but um, I think they could be improved. All right, thank you. OK, thanks, Chris. Um, so basically, you know, we, we're, we're here to make the report and I think we've had a really good discussion. Um, I think Chris has answered the questions as best he could. Um, you know, with regards to, you know, a point was made about, you know, usage of harbours and usage has changed quite dramatically in the last few years. Stand up paddle boards have taken off hugely, um, you know, along with the kayaks and, and people do like to store stuff now near the beach. These are heavy items and I think as a an authority actually um, Chris and, and people are taking the initiative and providing storage and everything so um, whilst I appreciate not everybody's going to be happy with this report this evening um, I like to think generally as a harbour authority we are trying to be as responsive as possible to demand. Anyway that report is just for noting. Um, Andrew do we, you don't need to do we need to vote on that or we just move on? Um, I do need to do a roll call, Chairman. Oh, okay, right. Um, could you do that then, please? Yeah. Um, can I have a mover and a seconder? Sorry. Yeah. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Yeah, that report is noted. That was Councillor May moving it. Who was seconding? I think Jeff Wilson. Jeff I'll Wilson. Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. thank you. Thank That's you. Evans. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yes. Councillor, it was uh, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Oh, Wilson. Wilson. Okay, I'll take a vote. Councillor Evans? Or Councillor Brown? Uh, I'll abstain. I only came back part way through that uh, item. Okay, Councillor May? For Councillor Nolan? For Councillor Rich? For Councillor Robinson? For Tony Good. Tony Good. Sorry, I missed that. Tony Good. Abstain. Abstain. Tristan Jones. No. Ryan Kitchener. Four. The Shipley. Andrew, can I just check? We're just voting that we've noted the paper. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for Jeff Wilson. For noted chairman. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, Angela. So we'll move on to item number eight on the main agenda. That's ISO uh, fourteen thousand and one assessment report. If you could turn to page one hundred and seven on your in your report pack, please, and it's uh, Chris uh, Chris Jones to report, please. Thank you.
by Chris. Um, do you that? Chair, sure, thank you. IT issue. Um, conscious of time, I will uh, go straight to the um, to the meat of the report and look at the corrective actions from the previous uh, report. Both of these were completed. <clears throat> I'd like to point out an error on the report that it says no new major non-conformities are identified. It is no new major as opposed to no new non-conformities. I'd like to highlight five minor non-conformities that were raised during the report. The first one is a pestle analysis needs to be completed. This is a political, economic, sociological, technological, legal and environment assessment. And then there are a competence uh, database table review, some control of documents within the environment management system for review. The internal audit procedure is not fully effective, so I've been reviewing that, and that links into the non-conformance process, um, not fully effective. That will be bringing across to our HASMA and our digital system, where the reports will be monitored and then available for board members to view as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Chris. The recommendation is that the Harbours Board considers and notes the assessment report from BSI regarding the ISA 14001 accreditation for the environment, environmental management system. Um, are there any questions or comments, please, from the board on that recommendation? No. Um, can I have a, in that case, can, can I just have a, a proposal and a seconder, please? Happy to propose, Chairman. Happy to second. Sorry, who was that seconding it? It was Councillor Brown proposing, Councillor May seconded. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Angela. Okay, Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Really good. Four. Tristan Jones. Four. Ben Kitchener. Four. Shipley. Four. And Jeff Wilson. Four. Um, yeah, that's been carried, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Angela. That's great. The next item on the agenda is item number nine, and it's our um, budget, basically, the Ports and Harbours budget for 2021 to 2022. If you could go to page 139, please. And um, can I ask um, Chris Jones to introduce this to us, please? Thank you, Chair. So the memorandum of understanding between the Harbours Board and the Council requires that the Board recommend an annual budget to, the, to be determined by Cornwall Council. The MOU further states that the Harbours Board will manage the ports under delegation from Cornwall Council on its behalf and address the balanced needs of the ports as a business and environment community asset which takes full account of commercial realities of port operation. You'll see the budget in Appendix 1 prepared. Um, we will have to review the impact of the um, fishing vessel charges um, in this budget going forward. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much, Chris. Um, any, uh, Tristan, Tristan Jones, you got the next? Sorry, I didn't have my hand up. Uh, Councillor Brown. Yeah, thank you. Can I just be reassured, Chris, please, that uh, this budget will allow for much better cover for the harbour at Newquay next year going forward as planned? Councillor Brown, yeah, thank you. The, the budget does include the role at Nuki that we spoke about, and that will come to you for the next board meeting. That's currently with uh, my line manager for review. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, um, we're on to each other. Oh, uh, Councillor May. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Chris, if we get any parking charges refunds, will that be added on to the figures? Councillor May, yeah, that should, if we do get anything back, that should fall into um, our current budget year. So not uh, the budget on the paper here. Thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor May. Um, any further questions from members of the Harbours Board in relation to our budget for 2021 to 2022? 
in which case the recommendation basically is, I'll read it out to you, is that the Harbours Board recommends to full council that the 2021-2022 budgets for the respective ports and harbours as outlined in Appendix 1 in this report be approved. Could I please have a proposer and a seconder? Move, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Evans. And a seconder, please. Councillor May. Um, Angela, could we go to the roll call, please? Yeah. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Nolan. Councillor Nolan. Uh, four. Councillor Rich. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Tony Gerd. Four. Kristen Jones. Four. Ryan Kitchener. Four. Ian Shipley. Four. And Jeff Wilson. Four. Been approved, Chairman. Thank you, Angela. Okay, so we don't we don't have any um, other business um, for the open public meeting, but we do have a, um, a, a confidential item, and we unfortunately have to exclude the press and public. So what I'm going to do is, um, I think, do we, Angela, do we need a, mo a proposal a seconder that we exclude the press and public? Yes, we do. Okay. And then do we do the roll call for that as well? Yes. Okay. So can I have a proposer and a seconder that due to the um Richard, yeah. I'm happy to do it. Thank you. I think we've got it in the it's in the chat box there, Angela. So that's um moved by Councillor Robinson and seconded by Councillor Wilson. I think so, yeah. Oh um Jeff Wilson, sorry. Yeah, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, that's that appears to be what's happened. Um, could, could we do the ro roll call, please? Yeah. Uh, Excuse me, Loic. I, I was out of the room at the time. I didn't hear the proposal. Oh, it's just that we go below the line, Tony, um, because the next item is um, it, we we need to exclude the press and public because it's confidential. Okay. Okay. Um, when I take your vote, can you also confirm that there's nobody else that can hear the proceedings? Because this is our um, routine for confidential items. So it's Councillor Evans. Four. And there's no one with me. Councillor Brown. Yes, four and confirm. Councillor May. Four and one dog. <laughs> Councillor Nolan. Yeah, four sat here all my own. Rich. Um, four and uh, nobody listening. Councillor Robinson. Four and alone. Tony Good. Four and alone. Tim Jones. Yep, four and alone. Brian Kitchener. Four and confirm. Ian Shipley. Four and yeah, I'm on my own. And Jeff Wilson. Four and I'm on my own. Okay, I'll just, um, if we could just um, hold for a moment, because I just need to get confirmation that the live stream is over. Yeah. 